Today we are going to have Dr. Yuan Bihoren to talk about learning Chinese medicine. Hi Yuan. Hello. Uh, I know that you have learned, practiced and uh, taught Chinese medicine for mm -hmm. more than 15 years. Yes. So during your 15 years experience, what's mm -hmm. the biggest challenges mm -hmm. you have uh, come across? Yes, um, lots of challenges. Um, so if you're on this journey on learning Chinese medicine as a student or as even as a clinician, and you feel some difficulties, challenges, it's completely normal. It's, it's really part of the process. Uh, we all are a bit struggling to different levels, but we all are a bit struggling. Um, the biggest challenges I found was first that the educational system, so the schools and universities that teach Chinese medicine, tend to have too much emphasis on theory instead of practice. So th there is a lack of opportunities to practice in the, in the educational system. And that's true for everywhere, um, in Australia, in China, in France, uh, everywhere. And um, I would say even, even for medical students, or other healthcare professionals, they also tend to say these kind of things as well. So it's not necessarily only in Chinese medicine, but it's very, very significant in Chinese medicine. Um, second thing is, um, that is more specific to our profession, is that in Chinese medicine, there's a lot of different approaches and different schools and we, we can see if, for example if we go on social media we found that some some different gurus are fighting against each other because they have different thoughts and ideas so it can be very overwhelming especially at the beginning for students to see you know all these different opinions and you don't know who is right and who is wrong it's yeah, it's very confusing yeah um I, I would say the last thing that is very challenging is um we are especially in um, uh, outside i would say eastern asia um, chinese medicines are not the mainstream medicine and we always a bit marginalized so in this journey we, we um, encounter people who will um, fight against us or we criticize us and tell things that you're you know you're not scientific or you're um, it's not proven or it doesn't work or these sort of things and it can be very challenging and it, it's hard to not take it personally especially if you have you know you so much energy to to learn and to get better at what you're doing so these are the main challenges i've identified <laughs> okay uh i think um based on the challenges mm. now we are more interested in that how did you overcome these challenges yeah, so um, I would say the first thing, the practice. So we need to find uh, opportunities to practice. And very early in my first semester at Beijing University of Chinese Medicine, I thought, uh, I understand it's good to be here, but I want to practice more. So I went outside to find some um, teachers um, outside, so from the university, from outside of the universities. I want to ask them, hey, um, I really like what you're doing. Can I learn with you? And some, some said yes, some said no. But anyway, I got the opportunity to go on and see what was going on in the, <clears throat> in the clinic, learn with clinicians uh, directly and seeing patients, see how it was working and, and practicing, like give, make, giving acupuncture, cupping and this kind of thing to patients. Um, so, and also to all my friends and family, uh, I, I studied very early to treat them and to help them. Um, it, again, I, I would say it's really important to, to get engaged very early in practice. That's for the first point. Second point um, was about different schools. And I would say it's, it's good at the beginning if you can find um, one approach or one school that you, you find is really appropriate to you and you, you feel it really makes sense to you. And this really be very different from one person to another. And again, there's no right and wrong choice. Um, but for me, um, my main teacher, I would say, or my main mentor was someone who was very close to the uh, integrative approach to Western medicine and in Chinese medicine, and he was very open-minded. Um, yeah, a very open vision of Chinese medicine, not very classical in nature, and that was my thing. And I really used that as a core basis for my clinical reasoning, and then I built up on top of this. So I have a main like core aspect of my clinical reasoning that is very stable, and then I built around different things that could be classical or not classical, but 
um, different approaches but, uh, with this core. And I would say the same advice I would have to, to have one core thing. Um, the third thing is uh, we need to have more and more communication with uh, outside, um, the, outside the change medicine world. Um, healthcare, other healthcare professionals need to understand us better and we need to get better at communicating with them. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing, why I did my PhD and why I'm still involved in research. One of the main reasons is to explain to other people what we're doing and let them understand what we're doing and that our practice is safe and can be effective for some people. And um, I also try to use as much as possible um, plain language when I'm talking to other people and using non-technical terms. So I'm, instead of telling them, oh, you have you know, spina stomach deficiency, I may tell them your digestive system, your metabolism is a bit weak. So that what we need to strengthen them. So people can understand what we're doing and they, um, they feel less um, that this is very mystical and very, very weird and potentially dangerous. <laughs> Thank you, Yuan. Uh, so I guess some of mm. the uh, people like who are watching this video, mm. they are the uh, students mm. or they, uh, they, they would like to start the journey. Yep. So do you have any um, strategies, advices or resources for mm. these people who would like to start the journey? Yeah, so a, a few ideas. Again, I would say be very active in your learning. Don't expect that someone is going to give you all the skills and knowledge and then you just have to wait and it will come some, somehow. It, this won't happen. So you have to go, go there, get the knowledge, get the skills, push out to get it. So what I would say, go out, see some, follow some doctors, uh, see as much as possible. And you have to be active. So I know some people, they, they do follow clinicians, but they just recall what's happening. And that, I think that's not the way you should learn. You should really see the patient that is in front of you as this, if it was your patient. And, and you start to think, okay, so they have that. What could be the reason they have that? Uh, might be fire or might be kidney on deficiency or you know, what could be the thing behind this? And what should I ask and what should I check you know, to verify my hypothesis? And then if it is true, then what should I do about it? Do I need to give them acupuncture and where and, you know, would herbs be good for them and which kind of herbs? So try to have this reasoning. And then once you have your reasoning, you can compare it to the clinicians who is, uh, uh, you know, in, in front of you or um, next to you. And if, you know, there are some, uh, you don't understand what they're doing in a certain way, asking a lot of questions um, and uh, asking them, do you think my way of doing things would make sense? And if not, why it wouldn't make sense? And get this feedback. So getting as much feedback as you can. Um, and uh, so that would be one, one thing about the following clinicians. Also, um, if you don't have the opportunity uh, to follow clinicians in the clinic, because not everyone has this chance, I would say read as much as possible clinical cases because these are available. You just have to buy the book. That's that's all, um, and then read it. Uh, and again, I would say when you're reading a clinical case, don't just read it through and say, "Oh, it was great. They they were cured. Whatever. That's great." It's try to have a look first at the presentation, clinical presentation, and start to think, "Okay, what's going on here?" What should I do about it? What can I do about it? And have your own strategy instead of just reading what the other people is doing. And once you have built up your strategy, then have a look at what happens. And it, you know, it may be the same thing, it may be different, but that's fine. Uh, this is really in the process of um, trying to think about the clinical presentation and what's the reason, what you can do about it, and getting feedback. So either directly from a person or from the book. And uh, except for that, I would, uh, th there are lots of resources, um, regardless of in Chinese, English, even in French, you have lots of resources. Uh, try to network as much as possible in the field, especially for people who are a bit more senior, who are, have been in the field for a bit more years. Um, and they will give you more resources about which websites, which um, uh, platforms you can use for education, uh, which books, because there are lots of really good books in Chinese medicine um, that, that can be helpful, especially for beginners. 
um, we actually trying to build up a document in which we'll record all these resources and give it to the um, to the public. So subscribe to this channel. We're going to um, to put it on the channel at some point later on, and this would be really cool job resources and material to work on. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Uh, I hope you find this video uh, helpful for your study or if you want to learn more about Chinese medicine, uh, please follow up this video. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Johan Berling. I'm a clinician, lecturer and researcher in Chinese medicine. We're going to upload videos on health, Chinese medicine and psychology weekly, so please subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you did like it and take care.